Hey there, I'm Dan with Dan Cakes, and this is Dan Cakes 101. In this video, I'll be walking you through the very basics of pancake art, Dan Cake style. We'll cover the equipment we use, the batter recipes we rely on, our coloring methods, and our general process from start to finish, empowering you to become a pancake artist in your own right in no time. If you're gonna make pancake art, you gotta have the right tools. The most important ones are supplies for mixing pancake batter, such as measuring cups, mixing bowl, whisk. Ingredients for mixing pancake batter. We tend to use a Just Add Water mix at Dan Cakes, but you can use many different recipes and you wanna get all those ingredients out ahead of time. A way to color your pancake batter. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this, but we at Dan Cakes generally use gel colors or icing gels, what professional bakers use to color their cupcake icing. These pack a punch with very small amount of fluid so you can get really bright, vibrant colors in your pancake batter. A griddle, a pan, or an otherwise flat, heated cooking surface like I have here in front of me. A couple of fine tipped squeeze bottles. This is what we're actually going to be drawing with. A spatula or turner so you can flip your pancake over when it's time. And seven, a plate. Now in front of me, I have the Dan Cakes Pancake Art Kit. This is an all-in-one starter set that you can get from us on our website, dancakes.com, right now that includes the Dan Cakes Pancake Art Griddle, a one-of-a-kind, specially designed griddle for making pancake art that has a special coating that makes your pancakes smoother and prettier. It's got a thermostat that has very well-delineated draw and cook settings, and it even has an even heating element so there's no cold spot on this griddle. It makes a big difference when it comes to coloring your pancake art. This kit also includes the Dan Cakes spatula. It also comes with a starter set of Dan Cakes batter pens and the Dan Cakes fill bottle. If you wanna get your hands on the exact same pancake art equipment that we use at Dan Cakes, almost all of our specialty tools and more can be found on our online store, dancakes.com. Now that we've covered the equipment we're gonna be using, in the next section, I'll walk you through how to mix the perfect pancake art batter. And after that, we'll show you how to color it. Let's get started. You know, believe it or not, you can't make pancake art without pancake batter. In most cases, we at Dan Cakes prefer to work with a very simple, just add water store-bought pancake mix. If you have cultural or dietary restrictions of any sort, such as vegan, gluten-free, kosher, all of those sorts of things can be accommodated with most pancake art recipes. But from an artist's standpoint, we've found that the most convenient and reliable way to get the best pancake batter base for pancake art is with a store-bought Just Add Water buttermilk pancake mix. Now, different brands of store-bought mix may require different ratios of liquid to dry ingredients. But a pretty dependable starting point that we've found is you're gonna wanna use about two and a half cups of water or liquid to about four cups of dry powder. We add the liquid ingredients to our mixing bowl first, and then with our whisk, we stir in the dry ingredients. After that, we'll use our whisk or a hand mixer to mix the devil out of it. You cannot overmix pancake art batter. While most traditional recipes warn against overmixing because it tends to make the pancakes a little bit flatter, we want our batter to be as smooth and silky as it can be so that it'll flow through the very fine tips at the top of our batter pen with ease. Mix until you think you've mixed too long, and then mix just a little bit longer. Whatever recipe you use, consistency is key. We're going for smooth, not watery, which is too thin, not sludgy, which is too thick, but somewhere right in the middle. You'll get better at sensing the right consistency the more you dabble in pancake art. Now, if it's not perfect, don't sweat it. I mess up my consistency all the time. Just do your best and remember that mistakes are delicious. Once I've mixed my batter to a satisfying consistency, I like to pour it into my fill bottle, which makes it easier to fill my batter pens. So here I'm gonna pour this batter into my fill bottle, and then I'm gonna add some of that to the batter pens, but I'm only gonna fill them up about halfway. You'll see why in just a minute. We're gonna start adding some color to our batter. Now there are several different methods for coloring pancake batter that you can use, but here at Dan Cakes, we generally like to rely on gel colors or icing gels. We have three of them here. Now before we start coloring our batter, it does help to have an idea of what we want to draw with these colors. For instance, if I wanted to draw, say, a simple heart eyes emoji, then I'd wanna make sure I mixed black for the outlines, 
red for the eyes, and yellow for the face. To color our batter, we'll take one of our half-filled batter pens and add just a couple of drops of color to the top of the batter that's already in them. The combination of drops will depend on the color we want to mix. If we want a light red or pink, we might only use one drop of red, but if we want one that's deeper than that, we'll probably add two or three more. You can mix all kinds of colors this way, and the more you practice, the more you're going to find yourself experimenting with different combinations of colors and hues. Once you've added color to a batter pen, add a little bit more batter on top of that, and fill it about three quarters of the way up. That'll make sure that when we go to shake the batter, which is how we mix the colors, that there'll be enough empty room for that mixing process to really work. After that, screw the tip and cap onto your batter pen, put your finger over the lid, and then shake the devil out of it. You want to shake the color until it seems like it's an even shade throughout, so you don't have any clumps of unmixed gel in there. Like so. Now, if you feel that our color mixing method is a little too hard on your wrists, that's fine. You can totally do this process in individual bowls and just mix it with a spoon or a whisk or a fork. Or whatever. We just like to do it this way because it cuts down on cleanup. Mix it right in the bottle. You don't have to clean off anything else. If any of the colors you've mixed seem like they need to be adjusted, you can make those adjustments right now. For instance, I think this should be a little bit of a richer red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple more drops of red to it. You can do this as much as you want, as long as whenever you're done, you mix it thoroughly. So it's all one even hue. So you've gotten your tools, mixed your batter, and added colors. Now, it's time for us to start drawing our pancake art design. Now before we begin, here are a couple of tips that'll help you grow as an artist and get you into the mindset of the pros. Griddle off. With most of the pancake art that we make at Dan Cakes, we draw with our griddle off. This surprises a lot of people. This tip by itself can make pancake art a lot more fun. You can take as much time as you need and only start to cook it when you feel you're ready. No non-stick. We draw our pancake art directly onto the surface of the griddle. Most electric griddles already have a pretty great non-stick surface. So we don't need to use any non-stick sprays or butter or oil to lubricate the surface of our griddle. In fact, we want to avoid doing so because oils can create splotchiness or strange coloration patterns that we want to try and avoid. Hand towel. If you've ever drawn on paper, you'll know that it's a lot easier to draw if you can rest the weight of your hand. Now we try not to get too in the habit of resting our hands on the surface of the griddle just to make sure we don't accidentally burn ourselves one day. But if you have a washcloth or hand towel handy, you can fold that over, set it directly on the griddle, and rest your hand on that. Being able to rest your hand can really help the drawing process. Coloring book. One of the most helpful pieces of advice that I can give to new pancake artists is to imagine that you're drawing the outline from a page of a coloring book and then going through and filling it in. The key here is to realize that with pancake art, you're going to be flipping this pancake over at the end. So whatever you put down first will show up on the top of the final product. So if you put down black outlines first and then color in over them, when you flip that over, those outlines will be the most visible part of your design. This is why I like to think of it like a coloring book. As long as I get those outlines down first, I can color the whole thing in without worrying too much about those outlines being obscured when it's time to flip the pancake over. Squeeze control. One of the most important tricks I like to make new pancake artists aware of is what we call squeeze control. You want to keep in mind that pancake batter is a liquid, and as a liquid, it wants to run everywhere. If I just take this bottle and turn it upside down and start squeezing, I'm going to lose control of my pancake batter really quick. To compensate for this, you want to get in the habit of squeezing just a little bit of air out of your batter pens before you turn them over to start drawing with them. When you do this, what you do is you create suction, and that suction within the bottle allows you to gently release that pressure to prevent batter from flying out. Now, squeeze control can take a lot of practice to get good at, but once you are good at it, it'll be second nature. I don't even think about it anymore. It's an amazing trick to help keep your line work consistent, and after a while, you'll be able to draw with pancake batter as if you were drawing with a pen on paper. With these tips in mind, we can design our pancake.
Once a pancake design is finished, I like to surround the whole thing with a nice strong border of plain pancake batter. Now this serves two purposes. First, it can hold the whole pancake together, give it a little bit more structural integrity, and make it just that more likely to survive being flipped. Second, by giving it that plain pancake batter outline, it embeds it in a pancake, and it really makes our design pop. After bordering a pancake, often you'll also see me back a pancake. That is so that in case I missed any spots while filling it in, I can fill those holes in, and it also gives us a little bit more pancake to eat. Once we've drawn, bordered, and backed our pancake art design, it's time to cook. When it comes to cooking pancake art, we like to do so at a lower temperature than you usually cook pancakes at. This is because we want to try and preserve the color fidelity of all the different colors we've mixed into our batter. If you cook pancake batter at too high of a temperature, it doesn't matter what color you mix into the batter. It all starts to turn the same shade of brown. We'll usually aim for about 225 degrees Fahrenheit as our cooking temperature. This is the cook setting on the Dan Cakes Griddle thermostat. We can expect this pancake to take a few minutes to cook. And during this time, we want to pay attention to the texture on the back of the pancake. As the batter heats, the moisture within will begin to evaporate into steam, which causes bubbles to appear and then pop. And as the moisture evaporates, the pancake itself will begin to look less and less wet. It'll be less shiny. Once we see bubbles popping across the entire back of the pancake, and once we see the shininess across the entire back of the pancake diminish, that's how we're gonna know that the pancake is almost ready to flip. That's looking like it's just about ready. Now, since we didn't use any non-stick spray, our pancake will inevitably be a little bit stuck to the surface. This is normal and to be expected. So before we try and flip it over, we need to make sure that it has released from the griddle. And we can make this happen through a process that we call carving. To carve a pancake, you're just gonna take your spatula or turner and gently work your way underneath it. Very, very easily, gingerly, sliding underneath it, working your way around the design until you can get the whole thing moving. Like so. That pancake has been carved. Now once your pancake has been carved, it's time to flip. Now before you flip your pancake over, take a deep breath. The key here is confidence. You're gonna wanna slide your spatula underneath the design and turn it over gently all at once. If you hesitate, once the spatula is under the design, the pancake can stick to the spatula, it can tear, you can have problems, but you also don't want to flip to the sky. We're really turning it more than we are flipping it, just sliding underneath and turning the pancake over. So take a deep breath, gently slide your spatula underneath your design, and turn it over all in one gentle, smooth motion. This takes practice, and if you mess it up, that's okay. Remember, mistakes are delicious. Once you've flipped your pancake over, you can admire your brilliant handiwork. You'll get better with every pancake you make, so keep trying, keep learning, keep growing, and you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish with pancake art. You're going to want to let your pancake design cook for a little bit on the other side, and then you can plate it. The very last step in the pancake art process is plating. Plating a pancake is easy enough, but since we take so long on our pancake art designs, we want to make sure we don't damage them. And there's two different tricks you can use to plate a piece of pancake art to make sure that it looks as good as it possibly can. The first trick, slide your spatula under half of the pancake, then use the weight of the part not on the spatula to touch the plate and to gently drag the pancake off of your spatula. The other trick, and I'll use this when I've got especially large or unwieldy pancake art designs that I want to try and plate, is to flip your pancake back over, slide underneath, and then flip it onto the plate, like so. This really comes in handy when the pancake seems to want to stick to the spatula. Either way, once you've plated your pancake art, you're done. Remember to turn your griddle off, and then, 
This concludes the Dan Cakes Pancake Art 101 video. You now have all the knowledge you need to become a pancake art master. Now you just need practice. We hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned a lot from it. We hope that you'll embrace the medium of pancake art as we have and use it to bring happiness and joy to the people close to you in your life. And we would love to see your work and hear from you. If you take pictures of your pancake artwork and post it to social media with the hashtag DanCakes or tag us at Dr. DanCake, we will see it, give you our feedback, and we might even shout you out on our social media pages. If you want to see some of the beautiful pancake art we make, you can check out our library of time-lapse videos here. And if you want to see more instructional content, you can see those videos here. We would greatly appreciate it if you would like this video, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a comment telling us what you thought of it. If you have any questions or want to give us any feedback, we are all ears. And if you have any suggestions for what kinds of things we should do in the future, we want to hear that too. Connect with us. Again, if you want to get your hands on the equipment that we use as professional pancake artists, you can find it all at our online store at deancakes.com. And before I sign off, I just want to make sure you all remember, mistakes are delicious. Don't be afraid of failure. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.